Japan's big bet on stem cell therapies might soon pay off with medical breakthroughs. Induced pluripotent stem cells are being tested to treat blindness, paralysis, Parkinson's disease, and more. Approvals might be around the corner. Japan is brimming with signs of an approaching medical revolution. Shiny white robots are tending dishes of cells, rows of incubators hum in new facilities, and a deluxe, plush carpeted hospital is getting ready to welcome its first patients. Building on the Nobel Prize winning work, Of stem cell scientist Shinya Yamanaka, researchers across the country are crafting cells into strips of retina, sheets of cardiac muscle, or blobs of neurons, in the hope of treating blindness, mending hearts, and reversing neurodegeneration. Results from early stage clinical trials, some announced just in the past few weeks, suggest that the cells might actually be working to treat conditions as varied as Parkinson's disease and spinal cord injury. Now, after nearly two decades of hard work and setbacks, many say that Japan is on the cusp of bringing these therapies to market. Yamanaka's IPS cells promise to bypass a bioethical standoff that had threatened the potential of embryonic stem cells for a decade, because production of IPS cells doesn't require the destruction of human embryos; they were considered ethically less fraught. Furthermore, because they could be made from the cells of the person. In need of treatment, they promise to offer transplantable tissues without the need for immune-suppressing drugs. In 2014, Takahashi put this idea to the test. She took skin cells from a 70-year-old woman with a progressive eye condition known as macular degeneration and guided them into a younger, more pliable state using a recipe similar to the one Yamanaka had devised and refined. The resulting IPS cells. Were then grown into thin sheets of retinal cells and transplanted into the woman's eye, where they have survived for 10 years and prevented further vision loss. Takahashi says it was a procedure with practical limitations. However, self-derived or autologous cell therapies are time-consuming and expensive to make, and the large cell sheets that researchers crafted for implantation required intrusive surgery. Takahashi says. She chose this approach to ensure the highest chance of clinical benefit to demonstrate to the world what was possible. It was designed to be scientifically the best treatment, but Takahashi wanted to create a commercially viable treatment. This meant a change in approach, using cells from donors that could be mass-produced and finding less invasive ways of getting them into the eye. She and her team. Initially, tried injecting a pool of donor-derived cells just under the retina, where they might form sheets on their own. But the researchers had limited control over where the cells grew. They next tried growing strips of cells two centimeters long and 200 micrometers thick. They used a tube to slide several of these strips onto the retina through a tiny incision in the eye, in the hope that they would expand into sheets. Results published in March. Suggests that for three individuals who received the treatment, the cells have survived and are safe one year after surgery. But the signs of benefit are mixed. One of the three individuals said she could see her husband's face clearly for the first time in ten years, but only through a small section of her eye where the cells had been transplanted. The difficulties might come down to the retina's natural resistance to regeneration. But other parts of the eye might benefit more from cell therapies. The cornea, the clear covering that lets light in, is maintained by a pool of stem cells and constantly being rebuilt. Even without approvals in hand, the industry is building capacity in the expectation that demand for these treatments will be high. In 2018, Sumitomo Pharma completed construction of what it describes as the world's first manufacturing facility. For donor-derived IPS cell products, the building in Osaka looks like a giant floating silver box. In 2020, it delivered its first cells for transplant for the fourth participant in Takahashi's Parkinson's trial. The company is also supporting two early-stage Parkinson's trials in the United States. Masayo Takahashi has chosen a more portable manufacturing model for her macular degeneration treatments. A white, 
muscular looking, two armed robot. Powered by machine learning, it checks in on cells' progress as they are prepared for transplant through a microscope. In four months, it can produce enough cells for more than 800 individual treatments.